Good afternoon and welcome to our first virtual campus conversation. Uh, this afternoon we are gathered with the Coronavirus Response Task Force. Many of the members are with me in this room and several others uh, are in the adjacent room standing by. So I'll begin just briefly with uh, listing uh, colleagues who are members of the Corona Task Force, uh, Response Task Force on behalf of AUC. Uh, we have uh, 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 Provost uh, Dr. Ihab Abdelrahman who's with me in the room. Uh, uh, our counselor, Dr. Ashraf Haytham, who's also with me in the room, uh, Vice President for Management Operations, uh, Shimon Shaked, uh, Vice President for University Affairs, Rania Borai, Vice President for Student Life, Dina Borai, and Vice President for Digital Transformation, Ayman and Abdul Afif, who are in uh, an adjacent room. And of course, the task force uh, reports directly to uh, President Francis Richardoni, who's also with us in the room. Uh, thank you to everyone who's joined online. We received a number of questions since uh, we posted the form yesterday, a, a, a huge number of questions actually, so I, I'm pleased with the response and the interest. We're going to endeavor to answer as many of them as we can. If we do not get to your question, please rest assured that we will, if you left your email, we will do our best to get back to you with uh, a response as quickly as we can. Uh, in terms of the sort of format for the next hour, I'm going to first ask uh, some of my colleagues in the room to make some remarks. I'll uh, address a couple of questions for them and ask them to, to, get, to make a few remarks. After that, we will move to your questions. And while the session is live, you may also continue to send questions and they are uh, being fed to me here in this room. So I'll be able to address those as we go along. So first, uh, I'd like to uh, ask President uh, Francis Richardoni to tell us a little bit. We're now kind of at a, the juncture of we finished our uh, first week of spring break. And we're going to be moving into online instruction next week, or two weeks, uh, as well as our remote work. So can you give us a little bit of, a, of an overview of what the next two weeks might look like and what are the implications that we can expect? Sure. Thank you, Dina, for uh, convening us once again. It has been convening so many times over the past several weeks. Uh, thank you to all who are joining us remotely. This really is a special time in my rather longish lifetime. I've never seen anything that has so brought all of humanity together, truly in one boat facing a threat that doesn't recognize national borders, gender, race, ethnicity. Um, and we're learning from each other and uh, we're learning quickly. Nevertheless, the contagion continues to spread. It's far from peak. And we know we have to take more uh, precautions than we already have in order to flatten the peak, stretch out the curve. So university schools, businesses all over the world are doing much as we are. We can take great pride in our level of, of preparedness. Um, I really do feel proud to serve with this community and never more so than at, at this time. So the provost will recap more detail. We are well prepared to go online and continue our core function of uh, teaching and learning, production and transmission of knowledge. I'm feeling very confident about that. We've also used this past week, however, to uh, prepare to reduce the number of people who must be together on our two campuses. That's the number one public health response that people all over the world know we must take, and we are taking it. We've already reduced the presence on campus this week, and we've been planning all week how to reduce it further. Here's the, the bottom line for next week, and we'll talk about how we want to achieve that in this coming week, starting Sunday, actually, of course, tomorrow is a nominal weekend. Many of us will be working anyway. Right now, we've got to step up our precautionary measures across the board to minimize the daily physical presence of all people. That means students, faculty, staff, contractors, visitors, all people on our two campuses, to those whose presence is absolutely necessary to the successful conduct of our mission now conducting it online under changed format and reduced operational uh, tempo. With that will become a reduced need also for more people. It's a, it's a kind of a virtuous uh, circle that we're accelerating. Again, everyone who does not need to be on campus should stay home. That, mean, that sounds simple, but it's not that simple. We've been working this past week. We're gonna continue working in the next week that we're going to be stepping up our measures that we've taken. We've been spending part of the time this week, in addition to the work that the, the uh, provost will recap to prepare for online courses, 
we're going to identify what tasks do we need to continue at what level of frequency, how many hours of a day, how many days of the week, what are the tasks that cannot be done remotely. We're identifying the people who are performing those tasks, and we will be using this current week ahead of us to see how we can reduce their number, the number of hours they spend on campus, the number of people on campus, spacing them out. Um, we'll be testing shift work over the coming week. We're also going to explore another innovation we've developed over this past week, and that is a regular system of remote working or what is often called teleworking. Many of us perform very important functions, but it's mostly uh, desk work that now, thanks to modern technology, can be performed remotely. Uh, we need to have the technology to do that. The, the nature of the work has to permit that. Uh, so we're going to have each employee speaking with her or his supervisor to determine whether her work can be done successfully in a way that can be monitored, in a way that can be productive and effective from a remote site that is approved by the supervisor and the area head and HR. We think a lot of work can be done off campus, work that must be done, can be done from remote sites. We're going to have to do some more training, some more uh, preparation. Uh, we're fairly advanced on that already. We're going to tighten up our system so that those who wish to do it and are able to do it may apply to do it and make the case written down for how that work will, um, will be accomplished successfully. And over the course of the next week, we will have a good list of people and jobs that can be done remotely. There'll be a final category uh, where uh, work cannot be done uh, remotely, doesn't need to be done at all. We still want people to stay home. And for those people, we're going to find ways of taking care of them too. Uh, we will, uh, we're working on innovative ways to stretch out leave and so forth. The first measure I would say is during this next week, from Sunday the 22nd through Thursday, we will not be charging people annual leave while we're testing shift work and reductions of uh, presence on campus. And while we're testing uh, who may have the privilege of uh, continuing their work from offsite. Uh, we are going to be doing lots of other things that will make sure we take care of our people. Let me just assure everyone that uh, protecting people's health is the number one priority. And we'll be keeping the mission going as long as that's possible. And I'm confident it will be possible through spring term at least. And then in the same, at the same time, take care of all of our people, whether they're cleaners, whether they're bus drivers, whether they're desk workers, whether they're vice presidents, we're all people. We're going to take care of these. I'm very confident, I'm, I'm very concerned, as we all are, but uh, we've got the resources. AUC has been here 100 years. We've been through war. We've been through epidemic. This is a pandemic, and so the whole world is involved. We've been through economic problems. We've been through a lot in 100 years. We're going to get through this. Not only am I confident we're going to get through it, I'm confident we will emerge the stronger for it, because like any crisis, it will advance the technology, it will advance the way we work, and we're going to be uh, permanently stronger in several areas of the way we work, uh, even after this passes. So thanks to everybody. I'm very proud to be working with you. Thanks especially to the uh, faculty and uh, you know, provost for developing the online so, uh, so spectacular way to get your buddies uh, ready to go. Thank you. Thank you, President Trudeau. Thank you. Thank you. And so the next question uh, we received is uh, in terms of access to the campus. So a question from uh, one of our uh, alumni, uh, why are we not permitting alumni to come to campus? And why are we next week you know, limiting the number of people who can access we have a, a beautiful, large campus? So what, uh, why are we not permitting as many people to come? Um, so President Mitchell, if you don't mind, I'll ask you to please address that. Um, the answer is simple because the number one public health step that all authorities are urging is to minimize contact among people, minimize crowding, uh, simply minimize contact. That means what I said at the outset to our employees, to our visitors, 
for our students, for our faculty and staff, stay home. Unless you absolutely must be here to enable us to carry out our mission online, stay home. So <laughs> if you're an alumnus, you're a human being, you, you qualify as a visitor, an honored visitor, a welcome guest in ordinary times. Um, we're trying to protect not only your health, but the health of our community. Please respect that and uh, understand why we have to close our athletic, our indoor athletic facilities. Um, and in fact, close the campus uh, as much as possible and restrict the presence to those who must be here. Well, next, President Trudoni, if I may, I'll, I'll direct a couple of questions that have come in. Uh, so one is related to holidays. So as we enter this uh, phase, uh, uh, staff members asking in particular about Easter holidays and sort of fixed holidays, will something be happening to those? What can we anticipate? Um, and then the second question actually is re revolving uh, around the virus. Uh, have there been any confirmed uh, cases on campus so far? The second one is easy. There have been no confirmed cases. We had people who uh, reported they had been on Nile cruises. Um, others, uh, we heard of faculty members who had left campus uh, reporting symptoms. In each of those cases, the people have got medical attention, examination, and proven negative. So thank God for that. Um, we are preparing for the day when we may well find someone who is test positive, and uh, Dr. Hatton has just explained all the protocols that are in place to deal with that. I remain hopeful that God forbid that they come, but if it does come to our campus, we will be able to isolate the case, uh, find out who that person has contact, been in contact with, take appropriate precautions, and still carry on, I hope, with our online uh, teaching and learning. Um, as to holidays, no change. Uh, of course, national holidays are national holidays and we will observe those. We did take the spring break, which was additional holidays, they were university only holidays. We moved those forward this week to minimize the presence on campus of students, faculty, and staff. That succeeded. We have vastly reduced uh, traffic. From that, we learned the kinds of support services that the presence of people themselves generate. Um, security services, cleaning services, food services, waste services, all kinds of services have been able to be reduced to a different potential. That will let us save still more requirement for people to be on campus. We will be applying those lessons uh, even more in the week ahead. As a, again, a kind of test period. And I think that by Sunday the 29th, we will be at an absolute minimum level of people physically present and yet able to keep on with our mission. So I have another question that's come out. I'll stick with you for one more question, President uh, Richardoni. This is regarding people who may wish to uh, leave or may have to leave. Uh, so the, the question is specifically if, a, if an international faculty member wants to leave to their home country um, or if there are students that wish to leave to their home country, what, if anything, uh, can AUC do or how can it help in this regard? Well, we're being extremely understanding uh, on the one hand, and, and on the other hand, having a, a lot of individual conversations because each person has individual concerns and family circumstances, uh, responsibilities and duties to others in the community. Um, if you're a faculty member, I'll, I'll let the provost speak to his conversation with the faculty. You have particular responsibilities. If you're a higher ranking person, you have even more responsibilities. Um, each of us has a responsibility to take care of ourselves, but also to think about um, our duties to others and not spreading the contagion. So those are the conversations we're having. I personally met with one group of international students, the CASA students, a very special group of Americans here in the best place in the world to study Arabic. They wanted to stay, actually. They felt safer at AUC because of all the precautions we're taking. Uh, because they're in Egypt, they listen to the public health authorities. E uh, each of them, I think, I think one had opted to depart. I'm not even sure of that. Um, but they were recalled by their home uh, university management, making the judgment for them. If the judgment were left to them, 
they had each decided they wanted to stay and we were prepared to accommodate them. Um, there are other groups of uh, young American uh, professional associates here with whom I spoke. Um, they too reached the same conclusion. Here they're surrounded by friends, a nurturing culture, a university that is um, taking care of them. We gave them the option um, to leave early if they wish, and they've decided to take advantage of approved teleworking uh, capabilities that were set up in their cases. Uh, they have worked through an approved process. They'll be very valuable in continuing to support our mission. They wish to stay. So each case will be, uh, will examine on a, on a case by case basis. And uh, again, coming back to the points, protect people's health, keep the mission going, take care of our people. And that's what we're doing in this case. Uh, President Richard, thank you, Dr. Marshall. President Richard, only uh, there's a question in terms of what is the university doing to uh, look ahead. So as we know, we're in a fluid situation; we can't predict the future. But how are you thinking about the future? What What is the process by which the university is looking ahead and trying to anticipate beyond the two-week horizon? Well, uh, we are in fact continuing not only the immediate emergency functions necessary to support online uh, training keep us all uh, healthy and secure. But we, those of us who do do desk work and meeting work and planning work are continuing to plan and, and test different scenarios. So we have our normal emergency management team that works even in between emergencies. That team will keep working through this period. It gets particularly busy during emergencies. And then of course we have our COVID-19 task force. We're going to, you bet we're going to be uh, teleworking and from time to time we'll have to have some of us get together to walk physical spaces and see what's going on and to meet. We're looking at the immediate term and the short term. I would say the immediate term is now to next week. Uh, the shorter term, let's say uh, the month out, maybe even to the end, let's call it the medium term is to, to graduation. We're really focused on graduation as a key Thing. We want our students to complete their spring terms, whether they're graduating seniors or they're at a, a more junior stage, they still want to complete their terms, so they stay on track to graduate one year out, two years out. Um, and then there's a longer term, which is summer and then and fall. And in each of those, we have questions. Um, and some of them have already come up. What about graduation? So we have people looking at that already, Vice President Dina Borai. Um, has that fall under her working with the provost and all the deans of the schools as they organize this? Guess what? We're not alone. Around the world, other universities are asking the same thing. No one wants to cancel graduation. It's the biggest moment usually in the life of someone up to, you know, age 21 or 22. Um, so we're, we're all learning from each other. Are there ways of doing the ceremonies that, you know, who knows what the virus will be like by then, the contagion, will, will things have, Will it flatten? Will it be true that warmer weather dampens the virus? We don't know. Some decisions we simply cannot make now, but we're, we're working them through, we're gaming them through, and playing what if scenario. All I can do is affirm our shorter and medium and longer term goals. Um, in the week ahead, we're going to test and see if we can, what we can do about our shift work to minimize presence. We think we've, we've got some good plans. We grew up, we were really confident on the online learning. Um, longer term for spring, we think we're in good shape that we'll be able to uh, uh, sustain all the operations we need to do. We hope that even if the contagion is uh, uh, still spreading and accelerating, we'll be able to have some version of a graduation ceremony, whether on schedule or whether we'll see what kind of ceremony we're able to postpone decisions for rolling forward. Um, whether we will have a summer term is an open question. The provost is mainly uh, concerned with that. There are some non-academic programs in summer as well, sports camps and the like. We have a lot of people making a lot of plans on what if scenarios, deciding which dates are likely to be last dates by which we must announce decisions. Um, and that goes on into the fall. For the American universities, many of them are questioning whether they'll be able to open traditional classes in September. 
or whether they will have to use the online learning processes. So we're very much in the same boat. We're looking forward. As I mentioned, I'm confident we'll be able to roll with whatever happens. We may have to do some things, you know, sacrifice uh, the kind of ceremonies we'd like for graduation. Right now, I'm not saying that's what we will do, but we may have to. We may have to um, sacrifice most, if not all, of what we do in the summer in terms of academic program. Those are things we won't know until we know them, and we will certainly keep people informed as, they, as we make those decisions. And along the way, we love questions. We love observations. We love complaints. Please use the COVID-19 task force communications uh, portal to feed in observations, questions, complaints. They help us think through this. And some people come up with really interesting ideas that we're able to uh, consider at the very least. Uh, so with that, I think we're, uh, uh, I'll ask uh, President uh, Richardoni to close, but be before we close, I do want to remind everyone, uh, aucegypt.edu slash coronavirus is a, uh, our website. You'll find all kinds of information and updates uh, continuously. Continue to monitor your email as well. Uh, you'll also find under, under contacts on that page a number of email addresses where you can send your questions. Uh, we'll be working diligently to address questions uh, as best we can. So please do keep those questions coming and we'll be working to address them. And finally, to close us uh, off this afternoon, uh, thank you to everyone for joining. I'll ask uh, President Richardoni if you could please uh, give us the closing remarks. Thank you, Dina. I think it's a conversation this afternoon has shown the conversation with the community. Um, we are a strong community, a strong university. We're in touch with the proper authorities who are dedicated to the service of the public, have us very much in mind. We have the people, we have the plans, we have the resources, we have the focus now on this emergency, and we have the commitment. We're going to get through this, we'll be the stronger for it. Our goal is to keep everybody healthy, keep up the mission and uh, take care of our people. Uh, I think things are looking good as we head into the weekend and uh, especially this next week, I'm looking forward to further advances in, um, in our management processes actually that will stand us in good stead forever. Be confident, take care, do be safe and touch with us. You are.